Amen. <laughs> it's this time of year where everybody's done bought everything for Christmas. And they got a combo pack in there of a, of a weed eater, a battery-powered weed eater, and a blower. That thing was $269, marked down to $134, and I got a $50 fresh gift card. Amen. <laughs> right? Well, I had a question in my heart of getting it. Because literally one day the Lord came to me and said, Samantha's to handle your finances from now on. Don't touch them. I said, yes, sir. I ain't got a clue. Somebody said, You're, I'm the head of the house. Amen. I hear from the Lord and I leave my house. But there's some things she does better than I do. And finances is one of them. Amen. Yeah. Let's just be honest. I couldn't tell you how much money's in this church right now. Because I don't fool with it. Amen. I don't know. I just know when God gives vision and we need resources there. Yes, it is. Amen. Tina knows. Samantha knows what's in it. I couldn't tell you. If you want to know, ask them. <laughs> and you're free to know, by the way. She'll tell you every detail. Yep. So I didn't know whether we got, you know. My wife's at home now. She's working a little bit, but not like she was. We made less money this year than we have in the last 20 years. But God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're blessed. So I go home with a question in my heart. I didn't buy it. <laughs> One thing my dad told me when I left house when I was 18 years old, and I did literally, what, three months after I turned 18, whatever it was. Never went back. <laughs> what a bad place. It just That's just the way it went. <laughs> oh, man. It's hard to preach when your daddy's in the house. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to get somewhere. I know I'm joking a little bit. So I get home and I tell Samantha about the deal. She said, I got $20 in my pocket. I said, you got another $65 I can have? She said, and we got it. I said, well, it ain't but a few of them. Let's go get it. So she got the, the dinner cooking, told Noel to watch it. We're going to go to Lowe's. We pick up the combo weed eater and blower. And I get home. Prayer time's coming, right? After dinner. I get before the Lord. And the Lord said, you didn't ask me. I said, it's just $65, Lord. He said, I don't care what amount it is. You didn't ask me. And then he began to teach me a biblical model called pure possession. And when I got into the biblical model that we're going to look today in pure possession, there ain't no way I would have kept that thing in my house. Amen? Amen. So Friday morning when I got off work, Smith and I went back to Lowe's and turned that thing in. <laughs> we'll get to the rest of the story. Let's go to Jeremiah 24. After King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon exiled Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, to Babylon alone, with the officials of Judah and all the craftsmen and artisans, the Lord gave me this vision. I saw two baskets of figs placed in the front of the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. One basket was filled with fresh ripe figs, while the other was filled with bad figs that were too rotten to eat. Then the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I replied, figs. Some very good, some very bad, too rotten to eat. And then the Lord gave me this message. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The good figs represent the exiles I sent from Judah to the land of the Babylonians. I believe over the last several years, 10 plus years in our experience, that God took us out of everything we ever knew and sent us along with Him in a place that we had never been before. And I'm fully persuaded He was doing that to keep us. Amen? I know it's not fun in Babylon, in a place where you have never been before, but he has a promise, and I believe this promise applied to a people that God called out. I will watch over and care for them, and I will bring them back here again. In other words, I'm not doing away with the body. I'm not telling you to go over here and start over, and I'll build a new church through you. He's not throwing his bride away or his church away, but sometimes he has to get a remnant out. To keep for a season and to, to, to care for them and teach them and lead them in order to bring them back. Amen? In other words, he says, I'm not throwing my people away. 
When, when you come across somebody that says we're going to go over here and do this and God's going to build the church afresh and new through our movement and, the, and, and, and throw away the rest of them, you, in a, you, you better watch out there. Amen? Because that, that leads to cultish things. <laughs> yes. Amen? You better watch out there. God's not throwing His church away. You say, well, God took us out of everything we ever know. But you know what? God takes you in seasons in places called wilderness so He can get you ready to bring you back. What did God announce in this place? I'm fixing to do repairs to the temple. What is the temple? It's the church. It's the body. Amen? He says, I will bring them back here again. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them hearts that recognize me as the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me wholeheartedly. This is where we left off Wednesday night in the midweek conversation. And I want to get into this biblical model for a few minutes. We're going to review. We're going to talk about where we were Sunday, Wednesday and where we are today. The title of the message this morning is this, Pure Possession. Father, we thank you. We honor you for how you're leading us and how you're teaching us through experience. Father, how you're just revealing model in your word that we are to live by. Father, I pray that you would penetrate our hearts and transform our minds that as we leave this place, we're walking in kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is where we left off last Sunday. He says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. He's been saying in this place over the last month to clear out your temple, to clear out the voices, to clear out the noise, to clear out your library, to clear out everything and get with his word alone before him and hear his voice, learn his voice and know how to move by his voice. Amen. He says, clear out the noise. He says, come unto me, let me teach you. We understood last week that as we come into yoking with Christ, as we come in, He's the one that stands beside us and teaches us to move by the Father's commands. Amen? Through the power of His Spirit. He says, eliminate the noise. And we get over here to Jeremiah 24 from Wednesday night. And we get back to this particular passage of Scripture. And it says... I will watch over them, verse 6. I will watch over and care for them, and I will bring them back here again. What we need to understand in that particular verse in this passage of Scripture is he's saying, I will redeem their position. I will redeem their position. The Lord revealed to Samantha and I over just over the last week, Samantha's home where she belongs. It's, it's where God has intended for her to be, to be on my hip side. She needs to be there with me. We do ministry together. We had a meeting Wednesday, and she's right there with me. She doesn't need to be carrying the weight of a nine to five corporate America world and, and bringing that stuff on. She needs to be free to move with me. That's it. That was, it may not be God's plan for every pastor's wife, but that's God's plan for her. And God said she would have been there 10 years ago, but yet you all made mistakes and she had to keep working. He said, but what I have done in this moment is I have redeemed her position. And because the Holy Spirit speaks plain to me, Miss Yvonne, he says, now don't mess it up. It's just $65, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> don't mess it up. Amen. Think about it. He says, I will bring them back here again. I will redeem their position. And the Holy Spirit taught us Wednesday night. He says, now you are standing in young times. Over and over and over. Over the last week, the Holy Spirit says, you are in young times. Young times. Young times. I have redeemed your position. But there's something that we need to understand in this. Is that we have you say, how is it 
that we are in young times and I'm 40 plus years old? How is it that we are in young times and I'm 70 plus years old or I'm 50? Listen to me. God is saying right now in your life, He has redeemed your positioning once again. You're standing fresh and anew. Ready to move into pure possession of what He has planned for you next. Amen? I will redeem their position. They will be in young times. They will follow me wholeheartedly. What you need to understand is we are in young times, even though we've come through a lot. And we, we've been in this call for 10 years, and God is saying, you're in young times? We're in young times. Moses was, what, 80 years old when God called? He's in young times. He's just now moving in to what God has for him. Amen. At that particular age. And he says just follow my voice. Just listen to me. And move. He says you're at young times. But you see the thing about like Moses. And people like Joseph. Well look at Joseph here and Sarah. But they have great wisdom at this point. They done been through it. Amen. You done been through it. And God brought you through. And now he's saying you're standing in young times. And he's, and he's, he's ready to move you into the purity of what he has planned for you all along. He says you're standing in young times. But you're a people that has great wisdom. You know the mistakes of your past. Don't make them again. Amen. I've been sent to a people this week to tell you that God has redeemed your positioning. Amen. God has redeemed. You said, I feel like I'm standing in a shook up spot. I feel like I'm standing in, in, in a time that I've never stood before. And I, 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 you know, I feel like a, a 17 year old again. That's good. That's okay. You said, I, I don't like the way it feels. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you what God is doing. He has redeemed your positioning. He has something pure and holy that he has planned for your life. And he's bringing you into possession of it if you'll clear out the noise. He says, I will bring them back. They will return to me what? Wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. You're standing in young times, the Holy Spirit reveals to us this week. He says, but yet you are a people with great wisdom. You understand the mistakes of the past. You understand the mistakes of your past. Amen. And he's saying, don't make them again. Genesis 41, 14 through 16, 37 through 44. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once and he was quickly brought from the prison after he shaved and changed his clothes. He went in and stood before Pharaoh. His positioning is getting redeemed. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night. No one here can tell me what it means, but I've heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied. And Joseph wholeheartedly, he says, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. What's happening right here from the, from the jail cell? Joseph's been through it, man. He's been through all kind of stuff dealing with his brothers, dealing with slave traders, dealing with abandonment, dealing with, with working. Uh, for a high-end uh, man of Egypt, uh, working for, for, for Potiphar, working in his house, and, and he's been raised up, and, and all of these, he's done been through it to be let down, and been through it to be let down by all kind of stuff around him, but God has kept him, amen? He's a man of great wisdom at this point. He's done been through a ton of stuff, man. And he has great wisdom. And what does God do? One day God comes and he redeems his position. What you need to understand this, this is another thing that we'll touch on in just a moment. But what you need to understand when God redeems your positioning, if you'll move by his voice alone and give him honor and give him praise, he will quickly move you into a place called pure possession. Joseph is called, his position is redeemed. And one day he's called up. In verse 37, it says that Joseph's suggestions were well received. He interprets Pharaoh's dreams. He said there's going to be years of famine. There's going to be years of plenty. You need to put stuff up for the, from the years of plenty so you'll survive during the years of famine. And so Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? 
Hallelujah. Amen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is intelligent. Or what does it say? Or what? Or wise as you are. I'm not saying this in a pretentious way. I'm not saying this in an arrogant way over you or over my own life. But we are a people with great wisdom. By the grace of God, he kept us and he brought us through mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. He brought us through times that we messed up. He brought us through times that we didn't get it right. He brought us through times where we went to one direction and he harnessed us back in the right direction. And we know. Come on. People of great wisdom. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on my throne will have a rank higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. And Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen. Do you remember the series? Amen. He said the final movement is into fine linen clothing. And hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had Joseph ride in the chair reserved for his second in command. And wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, kneel down. So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in this entire land of Egypt without your approval. Joseph went from jail cell to second in charge of everything in the land. He came into pure possession by what? The king's orders. Why couldn't I? I know it's as simple as this. And as a, as a, as a, a battery-powered weed eater and a leaf blower. Aren't you glad that God is gracious enough to teach me in something as simple as that before I make a mistake that I can't cash out of? Amen? Think about it. Think about the grace and the love and the care of a good father. It says, I'm about to teach you something about pure possession. You could have had that thing by the king's orders. But he said, because you didn't ask me. Come on. Amen. That gets us in trouble so many times. Pure possession is about coming into possession by the king's orders. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God plants this call wherever he's going to plant this call in this region, come on, wherever that is, that possession that he wants this call to have, it doesn't matter who says we can't have it or who by the king's orders will have pure possession of it. Amen? That makes sense. Pure possession. Joseph didn't beat and bang his way out of prison and shake the prison bars and act like a fool down there. He just kept trusting the Lord. Amen? When I, come on somebody, he began to remember when I was thrown in a well with no water, you got me out. Come on, when I was accused and should have been left for dead, you got me out. Hallelujah. He began to remember. Amen. He had wisdom. He had pure wisdom. Maybe he strutted around at times with the favor of his father and he remembered that's not a good idea. Amen. Think about it. Was he not favored? Was God not giving him dreams? Was not God not speaking into his heart? Amen. And maybe he strutted around a little bit. Man of great wisdom. But when the king delivered pure possession into his hands. Amen. It was okay to walk in it. It's okay to have a battery powered weed eater and leaf blower if the king delivers it into your hands. But you don't want it in your garage if he didn't. Are you, have you lost it, Pastor? No, I haven't. Amen. Come on. You got to find out when you come into possession of something illegally. You got to find out what it will do. Go with me to 1 Chronicles 13. We'll move. David consulted with all his officials, including the generals and captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel as follows. If you approve. And if it is the will of the Lord, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land, including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasture lands. Let us invite them to come and join us. I included this passage of scripture in the direction of the Holy Spirit because of these three words. It is time. 
It is time to bring back the ark of our God, for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. It is time. Several Wednesday nights ago, we announced and decreed in this place that it was time for repairs to be made to the temple. Be made to the body. How will that happen? God will do it in his great might and his power and he will pour out his spirit and the glory of God will do the work. Amen. I believe that. A great revival is upon us. I believe that of his church. It is time. It is time to come into pure possession. Amen. Let's bring back the ark of the Lord. God has moved upon this man's heart. And maybe God has moved upon your hearts with visions and dreams. I stand before you today and say it is time. It is time. It is time. But you only want to come into possession of it purely. By the king delivering it. Amen. Look right here. After the Philistines captured the ark of God. To come into pure possession, there's a right way and a wrong way. After the Philistines captured the ark of God, they took it from the battleground at Ebenezer, the town of Ashdod. They carried that ark of God into the temple of Dagon and placed it beside an idol of Dagon. But when the citizens of Ashdod went to see it the next morning, Dagon had fallen with his face to the ground in front of the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him in his place again. But the next morning, the same thing happened. Dagon had fallen face down before the ark of the Lord again. This time his head and hands had broken off and were lying in the doorway. Only the trunk of his body was left intact. That is why to this day neither the priest of Dagon nor anyone who enters the temple of Dagon and Ashdod will step on his threshold. Verse 6, Then the Lord's heavy hand struck the people of Ashdod in the nearby villages with a plague of tumors. Now, do you see why I couldn't keep the combo weed eater and leaf blower in my garage? Do you believe? I don't know what God would have done, and I wasn't trying to find out. I've taken that thing back to Lowe's. Amen? Pastor, you've lost your mind. No. We must only move by His voice. That's just got to do with ministry in the church. No, that's got to do with everything 247. Yes. Quit leaving this place on Sunday and doing your thing all through the week to come back on Sunday to try to hear something to get things straightened out. Listen to me. If you leave this place today and say, Father, I only want to move by your voice, you will have near the mess to straighten out next Sunday. Help us now. Amen. The Lord's heavy hand struck the people of Ashdod and the nearby villages with a plague of tumors. When the people realized what was happening, they cried out, We can't keep the ark of God of Israel here any longer. He is against us. We will all be destroyed along with Dagon our God. So they called together the rulers of the Philistine towns and asked, What should we do with the ark of God of Israel? The rulers discussed and, and replied, Move it to the town of Gath. So they moved the ark of God of Israel to Gath. But when the ark arrived at Gath, the Lord's heavy hand fell on its men, young and old. He struck them with plague of tumors, and there was a great pain. There's a right way and a wrong way to come into possession of something. Amen? What does the Bible say in Exodus 20? To the foundation of the law of God. It says you must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. With wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. That's why relationships built upon adultery have so much problem. Amen? Come on. Why? Because you didn't take that man's wife in pure possession. Hello. I'm telling you, people are fooling themselves if they think they can go along with what society is teaching people today, that you can cash in husbands and wives like candy. And listen to me, you, you, can, just, you can just take another man's wife and it's going to all be good because it was meant to be. I can promise you it wasn't meant to be. Never has been meant to be. And you've come into possession of something illegally. 
Amen. Hopefully that's not hitting somebody in the house today. But if it is, let me tell you, there is a right way and a wrong way. And if you want to live, I, I wasn't going to live in panic, Ricky. I wasn't going to live in panic. But listen to me. You say that's just a leaf blower and a weed eater. And I thank God that's all it was. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I thank God that that's all that it was. That it was as simple as taking that thing back. <laughs> Get that thing out of my house. I don't want a curse in my house. Amen. Come on. Listen to me. There's people under the sound of my voice. You've got idols in your house. Get the idols out of your house. Listen to me. There's people under the sound of my voice. Listen, you've got things going on. There's chaotic things going on in your family, in your family's life. I'm going to tell you right now. Oppression comes in when there's idols in the house. You want to see some peace? You want to see some oppression cease in your house? Get the stuff out of your house. Come on. You guys, we got stuff in our house that's not a pure possession. We think that's the right thing to have and the right thing. Listen to me now. God is speaking wholeheartedly to you right now. Listen. There's a right way and a wrong way. Amen? Oppression comes in over a people. Look at the biblical model. I don't know why I'm going down this road, but the Lord's been speaking that into my heart too. He said people are oppressed because of idols. Look at the model over and over and over. And they got chaos in their family. And they got chaos on the job. And they got all kind of stuff happening because there's idols in their house. If they get the idols out, that stuff will, that stuff will cease. Amen. There's a right way and a wrong way. Amen. First Chronicles 13. That's just extra. Let's keep on with pure possession. So David summoned all Israel from Shower Brook of Egypt in the south all the way to the town of Lebo Hamath in the north to join in bringing the ark of God from Kiriath Jerem. Then David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah, also called Kiriath Jerem, to bring back the ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord, who is enthroned between the cherubim. They placed the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house, Uzzah and Ahio. Doesn't say that they were Levites. Those are Abinadab's sons. Up in Ohio were guiding the cart. David and all Israel were celebrating before God with all their might, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled and Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark. The Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah. And he struck him because he had laid his hand on the ark. So Uzzah died there in the presence of God. There's a right way and a wrong way to come into pure possession. It was upon David's heart to usher in the presence of God that had been neglected during the house of Saul. I believe that was a pure desire in, in David's heart that was given to him by God. I believe that. He said it is time for this to take place. I believe that. But there's a right way and a wrong way to come into pure possession of something. And the result is either curse or blessing. The Holy Spirit wanted us to understand here that Uzzah was out of position to usurp. I kept hearing the word usurp in this study. He said to take a position of power or importance illegally or by force. Amen. The last thing that we want to do in this call, the last thing we want to do in our lives is to have something in our possession that we have usurped authority. We've come out of position to illegally take by force. Amen. I want what the king delivers to me in that alone. Amen. He said, be careful in this moment. Uzzah was out of position. He was not a Levite. He was not someone that should have been. The ark should have never been on a cart. We know that. We know it's being carried by the Levitical priesthood. We know that, that, that there's a right way to bring the ark of the Lord in. It was on a cart. And it should have never been on a cart. But Uzzah was out of position. There's been times in our lives we've been out of position and I'm here to tell you right now and we try to usurp into a position or take authority or take something illegal. Listen to me right now. God has redeemed your position. 
God has redeemed your position. If you don't hear anything else, you are standing at a starting line of fresh and anew to move quickly into a thing called pure possession because when God moves, He moves quickly. Amen? These are young times. He has redeemed your position. Don't usurp. Don't, don't try to take a step and forward illegally. Don't try to do something within, out of position. He says, this is the difference between curse and blessing. Amen? He died. Uzzah died there. He died because he touched the glory of God. He was out of position. Think about it now. First Chronicles 13, 11 through 13, David was angry. Sometimes we get out of position. We get out of position and we experience things that we don't enjoy experiencing. <laughs> we usurp, take a position of power and force illegally or by force, then the enemy will try and discourage in this moment. What happens? David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named that place Pera Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah as it is still called today. David was angry and afraid. Anybody been out of position before and, and, and it just didn't work out like you thought it was going? Come on. I'm going to tell you right now. There are things going on in the church that people are usurping authority illegally and trying to own things and take things into position illegally. And the exposure is coming to that mightily in the house of the Lord. An exposure is coming to that. And the enemy, we need to pray for the church right now because the enemy is going to try to discourage and he's going to try to make people afraid to go forward anymore. But we're going to believe God. Amen? He says the enemy will try and discourage in this moment. David was angry and he was afraid and he asked God, how can I ever? How can I my God, I feel the heaviness of the Holy Spirit this morning. There's going to be men of God in this season begin to ask God, how can I ever be used of you again? But I would tell the devil that he's a liar. If God can redeem position, he can redeem position for all time. Can somebody say amen? There are men and women of God that are going to go through the exposure of what God's going to tear down in the temple and there's going to be stuff scattered out and they're going to be so angry and upset and afraid and they're going to say, how can I ever be? God's not throwing His people away. He's not throwing His people away. Listen, it may not have went your way at times and it may, may not have turned out the way you thought it was going to turn out. May, maybe, maybe you were out of position, you were usurped, whatever. The enemy tries to make angry and afraid. But I'm here to tell you right now, God can redeem positioning. Amen? Maybe you need that redemption right now. What happens? So David did not move the ark into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of God remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he owned. There was a cursing. There was a cursing because the presence of the Lord, the ark of God, was trying to be brought into possession the wrong way. So it resulted in somebody dying, cursing. You know, you ever get to the place where this has been on my heart and I'm just going to go, you better wait on God. You don't know what I've been through. I deserve this or I deserve that. You better wait on God. You don't know how wrong I've been done. You better wait on God. Ask Joseph. Has anybody been done wrong like Joseph? You don't know how they treated me. You don't know the years of mess I've been through. You don't know. I may not listen to me, folks, but wait on God. There's a right way to have something in a wrong way. There's a cursing and there's a blessing. And God is saying today that it's time. It is time. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? It's time to come into pure possession. Hallelujah. That which your heart has longed for. That which your heart has seen vision of. That which your heart has dreamed of. That which God has woken you up in the middle of the night and showed you. Somebody needs to get excited. It's time. Hallelujah. 
But the Lord is saying this morning, there's a right way and a wrong way to come into pure possession. And the only way you want possession of anything is if the king delivers it. What happened here? The household of Obed-Edom. My God, I wish somebody would hear the word of the Lord today. You're trying to gain all that you can gain in blessing and calling it blessing. And my God. You better make sure the king's delivering what you got in your house. Because the very thing you have in your house could be the idols that are causing the oppression over your family. <sighs> Help us, Lord. Amen. Help us. Help us. Obed Edom's house was blessed. The presence of the Lord remained there. In Obed Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed the household of Obed Edom and everything he owned. Why? Obed Edom didn't ask for the. Come on. But the king delivered the presence of God to his house. He came into what? Pure possession. And what happened? The Lord blessed him mightily. Amen. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. There's blessing versus cursing. There's freedom versus oppression. Amen? Aren't you glad for God's grace? Aren't you glad for God's grace this morning? Because He's teaching you that you can be blessed in this season ahead of you or you can face a cursing. The year is young. These are young times. God's grace is before us today. Then David summoned the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, and these Levite leaders, Uriel, As Asiah, Joel, Shemai, Elel, and Am Aminadab. He said to them, you are the leaders of the Levite families. You must purify yourselves and all your fellow Levites so you can bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. Because you Levites did not carry the ark the first time, the anger of, our, of the Lord our God burst out against us. We failed to ask God how to move it properly. You might have asked Samantha, boy, but you didn't ask me. Amen? So the priests and Levites purified themselves in order to bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to Jerusalem. Then the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with its carrying poles, just as the Lord had instructed Moses, coming into pure possession. What God wants us to understand of this morning is if this call will move by His voice alone, we're coming into pure possession of what God has planned all along. Why did David go back after the ark of God? He heard that Obed, he heard that Obed's house had been blessed. What will cause people of this region to come in a great harvest and this call be a part of? What will cause the presence of God and His blessing in the midst of His people? They will hear of the blessing. Amen. And they too will come. Amen. But it's only if we come into pure possession. God's kept this. We've been right in everything. We have, we made mistakes along the way. And by God's grace, He kept us. And He kept moving us forward. And He kept speaking. And He kept moving. Listen to me. We can't mess it up now. Come on. We've done cut. You have already come too far through everything that God has kept you through. And He has brought you through. There's people under the sound of my voice that the enemy would have taken your life in the midst of your troubles. But God brought you through. Amen. You are standing in young times. He says, move by my voice alone. I have redeemed your positioning and I have a pure possession for you. Amen. Amen. And by God's grace, we stand before the Lord just like David did once again. He says he goes after the ark. We're about done. Then King David was told the Lord had blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, and we covered this. 
Wednesday night. I want to reiterate it. By the leading of the Holy Spirit, he said, after the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, at the end of Sunday morning service last week, I saw a vision of a great stride over mountains and land. I saw a great stride. I looked up the, the, the definition of a stride this week, and a stride is a total of two steps. And then the Lord brought me back to this model. He said, after David had gone six steps, and the Lord stopped me in that moment, he said, I'm going to triple the pace if you'll listen to my voice. In other words, this thing, this coming into pure possession of what I have, I have laid on your heart. He said, this thing is going to triple the pace this year. Listen to me, friends. And it's not just about this call. This is about your very life. That which you have longed for. God says, if you will listen to my voice. If you will not get yourself out of a, into an illegal positioning and trying to do the thing your own way. If you listen to my voice, we're going to triple the pace this year. And you're going to come into pure possession. And in that pure possession, your house is going to be blessed so mightily that men, women, boys, and girls are going to come and seek out that which is blessing your life. That is the destiny of your steps this year. And he says, I'm going to triple the stride. I'm going to triple the pace. And he says, be careful in this moment. Every time you take a stride, and they're going to be noticeable, you're going to see it. When you take a stride, he says, stop and give me praise. Stop and give me worship. Just like David did. After he'd gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fatted calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy. And the blowing of ram's horns. This Saturday we're going out into ten cities. Blowing ram's horns. You think, you think we can write this thing? God has been planning this all along. 2 Samuel 6. And as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, it's our last lengthy passage here. I know you're ready to go. Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. God's going to begin to move in places that people didn't expect God to move. God's fixing to break out in blessing in places and people aren't going to be able to figure it out as to why their model didn't produce a blessing like that. Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She was filled with contempt for him. Then the people were blessed. Verse 19. He gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. That's what's coming to our region. Hallelujah. A blessing for all the people. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said and discussed how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. She called him foolish in his praise before the Lord. The Holy Spirit stopped me in this moment in closing. He said, there's a blessing coming into pure possession for the land. And there will be a curse upon those who call it foolish. Amen. Don't you let people get, come on. Don't let people get in your ear and call you foolish for waiting upon the Lord and worshiping Him alone. And remind them of this passage of Scripture. There's a blessing and a cursing. Amen? Stand with me. Jeremiah 24. What do we know about figs? What did the Lord teach us about figs? It's all the figs are all about timing. You remember? You gotta pick, you gotta pick a fig right at the right time. Can't wait too late, can't pick it too early. It's got to be right at the right time for you to enjoy the fullness. He speaks of figs here in Jeremiah 24, and I believe he's showing us once again that it is time. 
He says, I will watch over and care for them. But then I will redeem them. I will bring them back here again. I will redeem their position. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them hearts that recognize me as the Lord. They will be my people. I will be their God for they will what? They will be a people that come into pure possession wholeheartedly. Not coming into it illegally. Not trying to take a position that hasn't been open for them yet. I've redeemed their positioning there in young times. Follow me wholeheartedly and you will come into pure possession at a pace beyond your imagination. He's going to do this, folks. He's going to do this for your life. He's going to do this for this call. I don't know how this applies to each and every one of you right now, but there's situations all over this room right now. I know it. We all got situations. But God is telling you right now, He's redeemed your position. He has something fresh and new that you're coming into pure possession of. And it's going to be a blessing to all the land. Amen. Listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. Move when he says move. Stay when he says stay. Worship in the great strides that are ahead. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for being such a good father. Lord, I thank you for the teaching and experience this week a lot of people will say that that experience is silly but Lord I know that it was holy I know that it was holy and Lord I have repented before you for not asking you and Father I know that you've heard my cry hallelujah and you redeemed my position Father, now, help us to be a people that wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly move in the days ahead. Father, you have something wonderful planned for us. We're coming into pure possession, and that's by your voice alone. Father, I pray that you would strengthen our lives by your grace to clear out the temple once again. Lord, to trash the idols and to be ready to move. Lead our lives. We thank you. And we honor you today. You are worthy of all praise and glory. Lord, we thank you for the pace that is ahead. We know you'll keep us in your hand to be able to keep up with you who goes before us. Lord, I pray that people would pause and listen for your voice before they make any kind of move. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We thank you that the possession that you have prepared for us is pure and holy. You've got it ready. And Father, we long to receive what the King delivers. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Father, bless your people. Pray your hand of protection upon them. Your mighty provision and blessing and favor upon every ordained step that you've already written before they were born. Lead us from this place. In your kingdom come. In your will be done. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you is our prayer. This Wednesday, we will have a special meeting this Wednesday that will cover everything that we will be involved in this Saturday morning. So this coming up week, we will be in the 10 cities on Saturday morning under the instruction of the Lord. We want you to be a part of that. You say, well, I wasn't here on Saturdays this past year. Doesn't matter. We want you to be a part of that. We want you to be here. We want you to learn what God is doing. And we want you to be a part of the moving forward of what God has planned for this call. So come Wednesday and understand what we will be doing Saturday. We'll be anointing the ram's horns here Saturday to go out, or excuse me, Wednesday, and, and be given to the people to go out on Saturday. So be a part of that. Father, bless your people once again. Keep them this day. 
Give them a great Sabbath day rest in your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.